If you've been watching my videos then you'll know that one of the projects I currently have underway is the reproduction of this board. This is out of an ADM 3A DUM terminal and the project is to recreate this board relatively accurately um, but also to include an additional feature of being able to use um, a more modern uh, design for the keyboard uh, but also retain the ability to fit original keys if uh, the builder can find them. A few of the minor changes I've switched to a single EEPROM so that um, rather than trying to find these uh, mask ROMs we can use more modern EEPROMs and also have the ability to switch character sets. Uh, I've also included an additional socket for VGA output. So I went through the process fairly painstakingly recreating the uh, layout for this board in my CAD system and um, it took uh, I think somewhere around 7,000 minutes so um, a very long time. Finally got it all done, placed an order for some boards a week or so ago and it's finally arrived, taking a bit longer than usual of course. Um, it looks extremely good so far, it's um, been uh, nicely made, they've done a good job and it does seem to match what I originally designed and uh, it might be quite hard to see because of the glare from the lights but um, as I said before looking at the tracks on the CAD system they looked a bit kind of lumpy but looking at them uh, in real life they're nice smooth curves which is what I expected the CAD system defines curves and positions so uh, that normally translates in the Gerber files to nice uh, layout if they're properly designed. So this has come out, I've kept as much as possible to the exact same layout um, down to a fraction of a millimetre for the uh, tracks uh, on both sides and um, as I say it's looking quite uh, promising. I'll just move the original board across so we can see both side by side. Uh, it is a bit lighter, there's no way round that, that's just because of the material that the original board was made from was darker and also it's older, um, but they are quite close, a lot closer than they actually appear through the camera. Uh, they, this one looks much darker on the camera than uh, compared to this one than it does in real life, they're fairly close, although this is lighter. Uh, so what I've been doing while waiting for the boards to turn up is sourcing uh, the various parts I'm going to need. One change I made was uh, in the heat sinks, although these are very slightly smaller they're more efficient because of the way the fins are arranged and I accounted for using this type of heat sink on the uh, actual board. I'll just put something underneath the board so I can get the components to sit properly. So I designed the footprint on the board to accept these. These are very easy to find uh, components. These heat sinks are quite cheap and uh, you can get them on eBay quite uh, readily. Uh, but as you can see it does look uh, quite reasonable compared to the uh, original. Not exactly the same uh, but certainly uh, close enough. The connectors are pretty much identical. The main difference is I've retained a full complement of the pins. On the original some of the pins had to be cut off. Uh, but I've retained all the pins and that might even be useful depending on what the uh, board is going to be used for. One other change, although I have included on the footprint the ability to fit this large capacitor, uh, I have also made a slight change to include the ability to fit a, a more modern equivalent size uh, capacitor. I won't push it all the way through, it will clip right in and sit uh, squarely. Uh, and so you can either uh, select a, a more reasonable sized uh, capacitor that's easy to get hold of or if you want to you can retain the uh, complete appearance of the original and I've been sourcing other things like the TL39 heat sinks uh, I've been getting ones that uh, exactly match the originals you don't need to do that of course I'm just trying to reproduce something here that's uh, as close as I can get it to the original and so to that end I'll just turn this around, move this across a bit. So things like uh, capacitors, 
it's entirely up to the builder whether you want to have something that exactly matches the original or just find cheap alternatives. If you take something like these uh, disc ceramics, uh, a modern equivalent to this value would be something like this. Uh, and as you can see, if you were to fit this in the board, it wouldn't really look uh, correct. Uh, but you can still source um, components that are very close to the original. So this is uh, the correct value. And as you can see, it's the correct size. So uh, it looks lighter again, but that's because they do darken as they age. Uh, but the idea here is to fit components uh, that will look identical to the original as much as I can. And so when I build this board, I will use uh, components that look as close as I can find to originals. And then if you do decide to build one, it's up to you whether you go down the same route or if you just find uh, a component that is uh, electronically equivalent. Uh, and I've done the same thing with as many components as I can source. So the uh, bridge rectifiers, you can still get hold of fairly easily. Uh, and that's uh, the bridge rectifier you can see here. It's uh, exactly the same type. You can still get them and it will make the, uh, the build look uh, very authentic uh, compared to the original. One thing I haven't tried yet is seeing if it will actually fit into the um, ADM case. One of the problems you get with a board this size, it's actually much bigger than it appears on the camera. It's, it's half a metre long and uh, it's a very large board and obviously it's far bigger than uh, any of the calipers I have. So measuring from end to end and trying to determine exactly how far apart the mounting holes are is not that straightforward. And one of the issues with the uh, ADM is that there are two metal posts moulded into the bottom of the uh, main case and uh, the clearance for the holes is quite small so if I've made an error in the size of this board or the positioning of the holes of more than 0.1 or 0.2 millimetres then this won't fit into the case. I haven't tried it yet, these only arrived a, a short time ago so we'll try it now, uh, we'll do it together. Um, I'm going to post the video anyway so you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing if it doesn't fit, uh, we'll have to think of some um, alternative, but uh, I spent quite a lot of time checking the measurements, so uh, fingers crossed it's going to fit into the case. But I'll get the case onto the bench and we'll try fitting this in and uh, see what happens. Okay, I've got the case onto the bench, just get it opened up. As I say, I haven't tried this yet, so uh, I've got no idea how accurately the board will fit, if at all. Okay, so what we have here, there are two pins, one here and one here, and then some screw holes. And we need to make sure that everything lines up. So firstly, if I've got the holes for these two pins more than uh, a fraction of a millimeter out, then obviously the board just won't fit into the machine at all. So I'll grab the board and we'll see if I can actually get it to fit in. I can find the other hole and okay well it appears to fit perfectly so that's a relief it's a, a nice fit not only that but the pins are right in the middle of the holes so it's not tight in either direction the holes are the same size on the original I didn't want to make them bigger um, but as I said I spent quite a lot of time measuring the distances and the, the layouts uh, also, it looks like the screw holes are right in the center of the uh, three holes for those screws. And that's the only thing that holds these boards in. You've got these two posts and then three screws in the center. So that was the most important bit. There are other mounting holes on here, but these are for screwing the uh, keyboard frame from the other side um, to the board. And I've made sure they're all in the right place as well. And then, of course, at the back end, you have the... Uh, clearance for the connectors. So I'll do that off camera but it, it looks like they're in the right place. If the board fits in then everything else was keyed to these holes so um, it should all be uh, fine. Uh, and then of course I've just got to make sure that um, all the other bits and pieces line up as they should. 
make sure that the pot lines up with the hole in the top of the case. Uh, and then make sure that the uh, dual switches line up with the cutout in the case. Um, I won't show that on camera, it'd be very hard to uh, be able to see down into the holes that are quite dark. But um, if I find anything I will let uh, you know. This extra connector down here is for the additional um, keyboard uh, board that I'll be making up. Uh, but if you can manage to find the original keys they will fit into the uh, positions, the key layout and the connections on this board are identical to the original. All the markings are the same, uh, options are also the same, so I've included the uh, footprints for the optional components, there are quite a few, uh, so they can all be fitted if required. As I say, the main difference is the use of a single EEPROM rather than the two mask ROMs. Um, so it's looking promising so far. Uh, the next step, once I've checked all the remaining mechanical uh, alignments, is to start to assemble it. So what I will do is, uh, I intend to use sockets on this. Uh, it's obviously never been assembled, so I need to make sure that uh, if I find any errors, I, I correct them. Uh, so I'll start putting it together. Well, I will do each circuit block part, you know, one step at a time, test it, and uh, I will include that uh, in various videos. Let me know how much information, how much detail you want on this. If you just want to see it working at the end, let me know. Uh, or if you want me to go through the, the build and the test process, then let me know as well. Um, it shouldn't take too long to get it built up. It kind of depends on how many faults I find. And that will again come down to how many faults were on the original board. Um, but as I say, it is looking promising so far. Um, it fits in as uh, it should. And uh, the next step is to start getting components on here. And I'll start with the power supply, go through into the clock circuit, and then I'll work my way through the various uh, elements, trying to make sure that each one works as it should as I go. If I'm skipping over things and you want more detail or you want more information, then please leave a comment on the videos and I will try to include that information in the follow-up videos. I will be making these boards available. Whether I wait until they're fully tested before I offer them or if you want to take the risk and, and buy one and start testing it yourself, uh, again let me know. Uh, if I find any major faults then I'll be re-spinning the board. Uh, I don't think that should be necessary, uh, but if I find any small errors that I've made on this board then most likely I will create uh, an errata sheet uh, as I do with all the boards I produce just saying what um, changes are required. There is one with the original board anyway that uh, it requires certain jumpers and links. Um, uh, whether that's required on this board will depend on uh, what level this board is going to be built up to. Okay, so uh, any comments, um, please let me know. Uh, but it's uh, certainly looking uh, quite promising so far.